So here we have a reefer, Red Sea reefer, 170. You can see corals are doing great. Got a hammer coral blowing up real big. This hammer coral, this hammer coral was surrounded by aptasia all around there. We took care of that, and you can see the heads coming back. Uh, mushrooms look great. They're blown up. Pink zippers. That started with two heads, and I mean, just a matter of months, it's really taken off. Got a torch coral over here on the side. Um, a couple more zoas up here. Now the problem we're having with this tank is, I mean, you can see there's great coralline algae growth all over the tank. The tank is healthy. Problem is, is there's some type of imbalance here between nitrate and phosphate, which is causing us to get a ton and ton of cyanobacteria. Now you can see it's all encrusted over there by the um, pink zippers. And then if you come over here, you can see it's just swallowing up that green star polyp. Now we've had this trouble with um, cyanobacteria in this tank for a bit now. We've tried um, red slime treatment. We've tried uh, the, um, what's the other one? The uh, chemi, uh, chemi clean treatment. Um, but it always seems to come back for whatever reason. So at the end of the day, it's a nitrate issue. So uh, let's go ahead and do a test, test the nitrates and see where we're at. And then we'll have a better idea of what we're, what we're facing. So what I'm going to do today is go ahead and, again, use my little trusty little small hose here and my five-gallon bucket, and I'm just going to siphon off as much of that cyano as I can, especially around areas like around that hammer coral. Uh, get as much of it out as possible. I want to avoid doing another treatment in here, um, uh, slime treatment in here, just because I feel like the uh, coral are doing great in this tank. So what we're going to do is just up the feeding, and we're going to uh, dose amino acids in this tank as well. There are only three fish in this tank. You can see there's two clowns and a, and a firefish. And because these clowns, which I'm not a big fan of clownfish, uh, if you don't know that, they're just really aggressive, and they won't let any other new fish in this tank. So we really can't increase the bio load in that way. So we're just going to have to you know, just increase the bio load through a bunch of corals. Um, the only other thing we have in this tank, oh, look, no, there's a royal grandma do darting through. But we can't add any more fish in this tank because the clowns won't accept them. So, yeah, so, f so we got a total of four fish uh, and two, I believe, two peppermint shrimp, and that's it. But we're going to have to increase the bio load in this tank because if we look down here, this is the filtration. We have the Red Sea Reefer Protein Skimmer, which just works like an absolute beast and just strips all the nutrients out of this tank. And you can just tell by looking at the sump, it's super clean. There's no, uh, there's no uh, detritus in the sump. Often we've just been struggling trying to keep nutrients in this tank, but it's really this, you can just tell that that's how efficient this skimmer is. But I mean, the sump is so, so, so clean. And there's like, there's no detritus at all. And it's really just a simple setup here. The Red Sea Reef, you have your, you have your ATO, uh, you know, your skimmer area, and that's pretty much it. And then you have a little filter sock, but we exchange it out with the, with the bread sea filter cup. And then we just use filter floss right here to catch any particulates. Um, but that's why you're looking at such a clean, we siphon this out too. We siphon out the bottom every so often, but that's why this is so clean. Now that comes to be a problem when your tank is a little too clean and you don't have enough bio load in it and you can have issues with um, cyanobacteria. So, um, my suggestion, we need to put more coral in here, which we're going to do today. We're going to put that orange hammer in there, so that'll be fun. All right, so here are the nitrates. The darker the color, the higher the nitrates. You can see that's pretty light pink, so it's just what I suspected, low nitrates. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll address that. Um, but that's why we're getting the cyano. All right, so we got the orange hammer in. It's looking good already. The polyps are starting to come out. That's a good sign. And we just siphoned around here. This tank is really, really healthy. Corals are doing great. Great coralline algae growth on the rocks. It's just a super clean tank. And it's just, I really can't wait to put more coral in here and really deck this thing out. It's going to be fun. And so it's not just saltwater tanks we do. We also do freshwater tanks. Here's one in the office. It's pretty simple setup. Uh, nothing too crazy. Got a couple cichlids. 
uh, hang on the back filter. Uh, but, you know, we do fresh water tanks. So anybody in the office that doesn't want to take care of the tank will come out and service it. So I'm really excited to show you guys this tank. This is a 180 gallon uh, custom built tank that we did for a local school. Uh, they have a marine biology program and this tank is set up for educational purposes. Uh, we live in South Florida and Palm Beach County more, to be more specific. And this tank is gonna be housing all local fish and coral. So all Atlantic Ocean fish and coral, which is kind of cool. It's just a beautiful tank. I love this thing. It's, I really, I really dig acrylic. I think it's, uh, I really love the feel of acrylic and the look of it. So underneath here in the filtration section, you see the chiller up top. And then to the left underneath the chiller, you have the ATO. And then right in front there, we have the um, refugium with the Kessel uh, refugium light, which we don't have anything in there yet because we don't have a major bio load in this tank. So we don't have that refugium up and running. We have that protein skimmer, which, you know, obviously I love those Red Sea protein skimmers. They do great. We have that running now. There's a return pump section. And here is the, uh, where the water goes, the overflow into those two socks, which are really dirty. I'll have to take those out and clean. Hits that uh, protein skimmer section. And then uh, return pump shoots it right back up and it tees off there and it goes on either side of the tank. So we, we, we did the best with what we could. We packed a lot in here. Um, there's a lot going on in this tank. See how it tees off there. Uh, but there's a lot going on in this tank. We have three power heads in the tank. We've got plenty of flow. Um, just really excited to be part of this. Like I said, we have um, uh, some, local coral, some uh, local corals in here, some Recordia mushrooms, which are native to uh, South Florida. I just put 20 of them in here. I had them all glued up here so you can see they're scattered throughout the tank. And uh, we have some other mushrooms in this tank too that aren't Recordia. I, the, the names escape me right now uh, that I put in here today too. So, the, you know, it's really fun because every time the kids walk by the tank, they get really excited. They, they get excited when we bring a fish out. They get excited when we bring corals out. And it's just really awesome to, to see that, uh, you know, that interest uh, from the kids and, and how excited they get about everything. I love these DJ strips, how you can be able to turn, you know, certain things on and off. I love these. So this is the first of many tanks to come for this school. We're going to have four more coming, some seahorse tanks and some other native stuff here. So I'm really excited for what the future brings in this, uh, this, this project. And uh, I know the kids are really excited and I'm just happy to be part of it. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you.